Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Starter Build, where we take a average ship uh, with average gear and try to make it something that'll carry you through to the end game content. Now, today's episode, we're going to talk about uh, turning 50. Uh, not you personally, just your character uh, turning into level 50, uh, which is basically the first part of the end game uh, situation, where you can play newer missions. Uh, you can also play the PVEs um, and uh, some other content. So what I would recommend personally, once you turn 50, as soon as you can, um, go to the Sphere of Influence mission. So this one basically is set up to give you uh, some Ancient Obelisk technology. So if you're using anti-proton damage, uh, this is basically the way to go. Uh, it gives you an anti-proton beam that's 360 degrees of a firing arc. And you can also replay this mission to get the Obelisk Subspace Rift Warp Core, uh, which gives you some bonus power to your AUX systems as well as a shield capacitor. Now those two pieces together will give you the 10% anti-proton damage boost, uh, which is kind of a nice thing to have. Um, so that's definitely the first thing you want to do, especially if you are an anti-proton person, um, and that is a nice uh, starter build to use as anti-proton. Um, so that aside, we're going to take a look at what ships we have as options when you hit level 50. Now, if you're playing as a Federation character, uh, you're going to probably get this at Earth Space Dock. You'll go down to Starship Requisitions over here um, and browse what they have here. Um, and we'll just take a look. So we have, uh, as you see with normal leveling, um, there's a cruiser, an escort, and a science vessel. So those are basically catered towards the, um, the uh, tactical, uh, engineering, and science careers for your captains. So all depending on your play style is going to depend on which one you pick. Uh, these are basically just free uh, gifted ships from the game, um, and though these are technically Tier 5, they're not upgradable to Tier 5U, which is the newer endgame status uh, before Tier 6, um, and the other downside to these is that um, they really uh, usually have one fewer console than the endgame ships or um, fewer bridge officer abilities. So what we're actually going to do here is we're going to take a look at another ship um, that came out uh, with the Year of Hell lockbox, is called the Nihydrin Destroyer. Um, now basically it's kind of a, it is a tier 5 ship, upgradable to tier 5 U, uh, but it's not a free upgrade like the event ships. So we're going to take a look at that ship here. Now the reason we're looking at this ship in particular is because if you look at the exchange, it's still under about a million energy credits. Uh, so it's actually pretty affordable compared to, for example, um, $20 worth of Zen to get the uh, Defiant Retrofit, which is really the closest thing that this is comparable to. Um, but the other thing is that it doesn't have the cloak, so with that Defiant you're technically getting more out of it. But uh, for a free ship, this one is not a bad one to pick. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to unbox that over here. So out comes our new ship, the Dorchester. Um, now this basically is an escort, like I said, like the Defiant Retrofit. Um, it does have a crew of about 200, base hull is 31,500, shield modifier at 0.9, a base turn rate of 15, uh, four forward weapons, three aft, and two device slots. Um, so it is sort of a standard escort. Uh, the advantage of this, though, is that it is an exchange uh, tier 5 uh, ship similar to the Mirror Universe vessels from yesteryear, um, but this one actually is upgradable to tier 5U in case you do decide to do that later. Uh, now, I didn't do that for the purpose of this video because um, we basically are limited on funds uh, for the sake of the starter builds, and we're basically just going to uh, throw a ship together here and see what we can make of it. Alright, so I beamed in the space here to show you the build, and basically what I'm working with for this ship. You typically want to stick with common consoles, uh, particularly for tacticals, so that, that way you can switch them between characters if you like to um, level other characters along the way uh, with different damage types just to play around with. Uh, common is a good place to start, so most of mine here are common tactical consoles. Um, now. Uh, the science consoles I have here, this is basically the science console you're going to want for every ship. Uh, this essentially boosts your shield capacity. So if you can see here, my forward and rear shields, all the facings are about 7,900. Um, as I take these off, um, you'll see it drop quite substantially. Um, so it may not seem like much, 
um, generally speaking, but two of these things on this particular ship uh, are definitely nice to have. Uh, now, science consoles, you can get fleet ones later on, um, but this is one of those ships where uh, those science consoles probably won't do as much for you just because you can't stack as many of them. Uh, so you'd probably want to stick with something like this just to boost one of your ship stats. Um, now, for the engineering consoles, um, I picked an armor one that I had upgraded along the way um, from my uh, Delta Recruit that I'm using here. Uh, this one is ultra rare. Normally you'd find these from loot uh, around uncommon or common, um, or even rare in some cases. Uh, but you basically can upgrade them if you want to. Uh, the fleet ones obviously are going to be much better because they're going to do more for you, but uh, this is a good thing to start with. Um, we also have an RCS here to boost turn rate. Um, not quite as critical on an escort, but it's something to have. And then an additional armor console just because uh, the hull rating is good, but we want our damage resistances as high as we can get them. So we have about 29% uh, damage resistance on this build, so that's pretty good. Um, now, something I did here for the actual weapons, uh, I did it a little bit differently than you might see on most builds. Uh, we did uh, single cannons, uh, just as sort of a test, um, and then the turrets that are the 360 degree firing turrets. Uh, so those will always shoot at your target. Uh, now, the reason I'm doing single cannons is that this is a really good beginner build, so you don't really have to be as on the target as with a dual heavy cannon or dual cannons because uh, the targeting arc is 180 degrees rather than that 45 degree narrow arc. Um, now this ship definitely turns fast enough to do the 45 degree arc, but it's just personal preference and at least to start with escorts, um, it's not a bad idea to play around with the single cannons uh, just to start and then as you kind of get better at pointing at your targets or um, getting them in one area, then you know, move on to the 45 degree arc dual heavy cannons or the dual beams if that's uh, the way you want to set up your build. Uh, but in any case, that's how I set up this one, um, and a torpedo there uh, to make use of Torpedo Spread 3, uh, which comes with uh, my unique uh, bridge officer that everyone should get based on uh, starting the game. So the main things I want to focus on here are the basic versions of your ship uh, hardware, essentially. So you have your deflector, your impulse, your warp core, and your shields. Um, now if you've been playing for a while, you're probably familiar with the different types, uh, but these are basically them, just so you have them. So Graviton Deflector Array, uh, as you can see, it increases Graviton Generators, Subspace, Decompiler, and Countermeasures. This is sort of a science-y um, deflector. We also have the Tachyon Deflector Array, which increases Flow Capacitor, Stealth, and Particle Generators. So this is, if you're running a drain boat and you have nothing else, you'd probably want to use something like this, or something based on that that happens to be a unique set uh, version of it. Um, and also, Positron Deflector Array, this is really your survivable um, deflector. So if you don't know what else to put on there, I'd use this one, uh, which is the one that I'm using on this particular build. Uh, Positron Deflector Arrays boost your shield emitters, structural integrity, and shield system. So if you're someone where your shields go down a lot and they go down fast, this is one to use to start with uh, at the very least. Um, now as far as engines go, I'm using the efficient impulse engines. Um, that you actually get from the Federation mission Past Imperfect. Um, now there's a KDF version which is second star to the right straight on till morning and then uh, the Romulan version is smash and grab. All those missions award this same efficient impulse engine. Uh, the nice thing about it is that it will boost power levels of other systems not just your engines for having the, um, the actual engine there. Uh, now if you don't have that or if you haven't played that mission or you got a different reward when you did play it that's fine too. Um, the standard engines that you'll see in the game are the Hyper Impulse, which basically all you need to know here is that they're efficient at high power levels. Uh, you have your regular Impulse, which is just kind of your standard middle-of-the-road engine, and then your Combat Impulse engines, which are efficient at low power levels. Now, especially when you're starting off the game, you're probably going to be running uh, fairly low engine power, uh, because uh, if you don't already have a leech, uh, particularly for Federation characters, it's a little more expensive to get the leech. Uh, but I personally don't run them just because they are so expensive, but um, the combat impulse engines will make it more efficient at the low power levels, so that way um, you know you can still uh, navigate pretty well, even when your engine power is pretty minimal. Um, so that's basically the one that I would recommend if you're just starting out. Um, now the warp cores, there are several variants. Uh, this is one that I'm using just because I happen to get it as a reward, and I like what it does. Uh, this one is 100% increase to base regeneration rate of all power levels. 
So that basically is the equivalent of like an EPS power boost, uh, where your power uh, transfer rates are going to be a little bit better um, if you're going from full impulse to uh, regular impulse or what have you. Um, so that will help with that. Uh, now the other versions are the deuterium stabilized warp core, and uh, that gives you the 15% increased uh, base resistance rate of all power levels. So that means that if you're getting power drained by the Borg or something like that, uh, this is probably the one you're going to want to use for that. Um, if your power insulators otherwise are not very high skill-wise, um, then you'd want that. Um, the hyper-injection warp core here gives you extra engine power, so if you are um, in need of extra engine power, that's the way to go, but uh, for the most part, unless you're trying to make a very high turn rate uh, build, that's really not going to be too critical. Um, now the overcharge warp core here, uh, that adds to aux power, so this is more for your science builds, um, and it basically will um, help your aux power to exceed 125 if you decide to go that route, uh, to really crank that aux power. Um, so of course for this one, um, like I said, I'm using this one, the plasma integrated warp core, uh, which has that base regenerate, uh, which is kind of handy. Now shields, there's several schools of thought for that. Uh, there's basically three main types of shields uh, besides your standard shield array. This is your standard one, so you have a base amount. Um, now if you notice, I have the resilient shield array equipped there, the Mark 12, so it's a little bit more anyway, but uh, you'll see that the cap is lower, but the bleed through is also lower. So that means that you know if you get 100 damage, then only 5% uh, of that is actually going to bleed through to your hull, assuming that your shields are full. Um, now, of course, that's going to increase, the bleed through is going to increase as your shield power goes down or as your shield, uh, you know, strength goes down. So that's just something to consider. Um, the covariant shield array typically has the highest cap, uh, but probably the lowest regeneration rate. Uh, so that one's good if you're using mostly active heals, which you're going to be doing in battle anyway. So a lot of people argue that covariant is the best shield because of that extra cap. Um, now the final one is the regenerative shield array. So this is good if you're playing a lot of missions where there's clusters of people and you're zooming between those clusters. Uh, so you basically, let's say you wipe out four guys, uh, you go along to another you know, 12 kilometers away to wipe out another four guys. Uh, the regenerative shield is probably good for that because that's going to regen your shields a lot quicker in that sort of downtime that you have between both shield heals and those other groups of people. Um, it'll help a lot when you're out of combat, uh, more so than when you're in combat. So that's just something to consider. Um, now with that said here, I'm going to go along to the uh, bridge officer abilities here. Okay, so the bridge officer abilities, uh, you can kind of do a decent amount with this ship as far as what you want to do with it. Um, now what I did uh, probably is a little controversial or something that you might not necessarily want to run. Uh, the tactical captain that I'm using here does have some tactical abilities that are going to enhance the build anyway. Um, so basically, uh, a lot of people would say that you want uh, Cannon Scatter Volley 3, um, because that's going to give you more, um, basically, dispersion of your uh, cannon fire amongst different targets. Uh, this Rapid Fire 3, which is what I'm using, um, is a little easier to obtain. Uh, you can actually train it from your tactical captains if you have the right skills laid out. Um, and you can also get it from the exchange as well, a little, little cheaper than uh, can uh, Scatter Volley. Uh, but in any case, uh, that is something where, um, that's sort of multiple schools of thought, but the Rapid Fire 3 is what I have on this particular build. Uh, it's still going to do more damage than your standard cannon fire. Um, now then I have Torpedo Spread 3, which is probably the most damage you're going to get out of uh, standard torpedoes. Um, now this is basically why I am picking Transphasic. Uh, as my main torpedo here, uh, because this one has extra shield bleed through, so if you are shooting at one target per se, and there are other targets that happen to be around and are in your firing arc for the torpedo, uh, which it looks like is um, 90 degrees of a targeting arc, uh, if they're in that range, uh, then basically you'll happen to hit those other guys, and if their shields are fully up, you'll get that extra bleed through with the transphasic versus any other type of torpedo. So again, just something to keep in mind, I recommend Transphasic for uh, beginner builds uh, for that reason. You get the extra shield penetration. Um, now, Attack Pattern Beta 1, um, this is basically just a way to debuff the people that you're shooting at, so you basically kill their damage resistance rating. 
Um, so that will definitely help you to wear down people's shields, people's hull, uh, just to kind of get some extra damage out there. It affects both cannon abilities, uh, well, beam abilities as well, so all energy types, as well as the uh, kinetic damage from torpedoes and kinetic cutting beams if you're running that, and so forth. Uh, I'm also doubling up on tactical team here, uh, because I'm aware that my shields aren't the best, uh, because this character hasn't even played the Solonay story arc, so I haven't gotten that set yet. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. So I'm running the tactical teams just to make sure that those shields stay up while I'm pointing at the targets. Um, now for the engineers, um, I'm running the emergency power to shields one on both of them. Um, you could run a Drake build with this, I suppose, but that's not really the focus of this build. Um, so we're just keeping them at standard, just two emergency power to shields. Uh, you can make one emergency power to weapons. It's really personal preference, uh, but that's just how I have this one set up. Uh, now, Engineering Team 2 is my main hull heal uh, on all of my characters, really. Uh, same thing with Science Team 2 for my shields. Uh, those are my two main heals, uh, just because they do so much for you at the level 2. Uh, and most ships actually do have at least a Lieutenant Engineer and a Lieutenant Science that you can run those two things on. Um, so just food for thought. Um, also, Hazard Emitters 1 is also a good hull heal, um, which is improved based on certain skills that you're running and so forth. Um, so that's basically that. Now going back to my second tactical captain or second tactical bridge officer, um, we have Cannon Scatter Volley 2, uh, Attack Finder Beta 1 again, so I'm running two of those, um, basically doubling up so that we can do one volley of Attack Finder Beta 1 and uh, Cannon Rapid Fire 3, and then once that is off of cooldown, uh, then the shared cooldown uh, for this is a little lower for uh, Cannon Scatter Volley 2 and Attack Pattern Beta 1 again. And of course we have Alpha 3, if you're a tactical captain that's a huge, huge damage boost. Um, but uh, again, it's not totally critical, so if you're making a similar build with an Engineer, um, that's okay too. Uh, this is again more of a starter build anyway. So I also kind of wanted to go through some basics as far as loading out your tray. Um, now if you're using Keybinds, that's great. Um, I'm not really doing that on this build. Uh, with Keybinds, you'll definitely get a lot more damage output, and healing abilities will be mapped a little bit more ergonomically for you. Uh, but uh, this is sort of uh, just sort of a beginner setup. So what we have here is the first row I have bound to uh, numbers 1 through 0, uh, which is a default for space abilities, I believe. And then the second row I have bound for F1 through F10. Um, and that's kind of important because it's a second whole row of buttons or abilities that you're going to have quick access to just from a single button without really a whole lot of effort uh, setting that up. Um, F11 and 12, I happen to map to these top two. Uh, those are basically my oh crap buttons, so if you have to get out of somewhere in a hurry, um, it's usually if I'm running a Klingon or Romulan build, it's the evasive maneuvers and cloak or battle cloak. Um, but in this case, it's uh, go down fighting uh, just because that's sort of the I'm about to die. Uh, ability for tactical captains anyway. Uh, we also have the ramming speed of course which is not too far away either. Um, now I set it up so that basically I can toggle F1 and F2 at the same time to start that as an attack run um, and also just physically click torpedo spread so that, that way you have the you know all these things activating at once. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind for the style of playing. And um, if you were doing keybinds you'd probably bind tactical team at the same time as those abilities so that way you can just kind of always have your shields there and not really worry about you know manually healing your shields uh, until you're really kind of uh, past the point of no return anyway uh, where your active shield heals are going to do more for you. Um, now over here I have the sort of semi drake setup um, where you'd have the two emergency power abilities together. Um, this is really kind of up to you how you want to run this but um, we have our sort of abilities mapped there. Um, now I do have my buffs uh, set up for 1 through 5 typically, um, so that way I can buff the ship, uh, and then F1 through F5 or F6 are usually my uh, tactical abilities, and then we have F6 through 8 or 9 as uh, either pet abilities if you have a carrier, or um, just sort of you know fleet support, pirates if you have that, um, and I believe there's an Iconian version uh, that's out this week, um, but in any case, uh, that's sort of a basic setup uh, where you can quickly access a lot of your captain abilities and bridge officer abilities right there in the tray and with physical buttons if you choose um, or you know any combination of the two. Um, also power levels uh, for escorts this is kind of how I like to run them 
uh, sort of a you know an exponential curve here. So we have a weapons at highest, and then shields second highest. Ox is lowest because you're not really using any exotic abilities on this ship, um, and then engines you know approximately end up around 50 if you have uh, you know your warp core uh, skills uh, fairly high. Uh, not really a requirement though again because since we are an escort, this thing's going to turn pretty well. And I'll just give you a little. A little turning demo just to show you how fast it does turn. So if I were to target this guy who happened to pop up behind me, you can see it takes you know, a couple seconds to spin around. But the nice thing about the single cannons is that from here, we're still within the 180 firing arc of this stuff. Uh, so you can actually see the firing arc as you highlight your weapons, which is kind of nice. So just to give you an idea of how effective single cannons are um, without much turn rate, um, you can still you know do a lot of damage even though you're not facing directly at the person that you're shooting at. So just kind of food for thought there, um, but uh, that's sort of how I set up this build so you can pretty much damage anything in front of you. Alright, so that being said, let's go ahead and take this thing into battle and see what we can do with it. So just as I did on an earlier video, um, I wanted to give people some familiar turf. Uh, so this here is the Japori system that we're going to be going into. So that is a nice place to test out a lot of builds. Um, it's also one of the easiest patrols that you can do. Um, so Romulan Reputation is probably where you want to start uh, when you're first starting to turn level 50. So the first thing you may notice um, as a single cannon build as compared with a dual heavy cannon build, um, obviously it's going to take a lot longer to wear down your opponents with the single cannons, but as we're turning here you'll notice that the single cannons do come back on target a lot more quickly than your dual heavies normally would. Um, so this is mostly for the sake of ease of play, uh, not necessarily for the, you know, the most DPS, because you're not going to be doing a lot of DPS out the gate at level 50 anyway. Um, so this is more focused on uh, getting used to the escort playstyle, um, and then once, like I said, you get used to it, uh, switch up to dual heavies, which are going to do a lot more damage, uh, but have a much narrower far uh, firing arc. Um, so maybe you might want to wait until you get some of those uh, fleet uh, RCS consoles or some of the pilot specialization that will actually boost your uh, turn rates and give you some other perks as well. Now another thing you might notice uh, that I've changed here is the tray. Um, the loadout is a little bit different than the one uh, that I just had. Uh, I made that change real quick here. So that basically uh, 6 through 0 are going to be my heals, 1 through 5 are going to be my buffs, uh, F1 through F5 are my um, attack buffs, and then F6 through F10 are my support abilities. So I'm going to let you enjoy the battle from here on out, um, and if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave comments in the section below, um, or subscribe, uh, and stay tuned for more videos similar to this, um, and we'll be back uh, hopefully in the next week or two with some more footage. Okay.